I think the first thing to understand about making stuff that's genuine to you is to not try and impress anybody. The goal whenever you're making stuff that's ungenuine is that you're trying to please the, the liking of the person who influences you. So you look at, let's say, your top influencer, the person who's like at the peak of your inspiration, and you go, I really think they would love what I make. Back when I was starting to make movies, my number one filmmaker of influence and inspiration was Christopher Nolan. And so what I consistently did was I'd watch all of his movies and then I'd make copies of it with the slightest of hope that he would watch one of my movies and go, I'm gonna hire you. You make the same stuff I make, which means we are alike, which means we can make stuff together. And so what this ended up doing was the movies that I was making were, I mean, this was back in high school, but they felt really awkward because it was, I was trying to make Christopher Nolan movies. First of all, making a Christopher Nolan movie on a student level budget is, is not the best idea. I was also making stuff that was not genuine to me. It was genuine to my interests. And here's the thing, authenticity and interests can be very, different things. You might be interested in soccer, but you might be a terrible soccer player. And even if you try playing soccer a lot, maybe you do it as a hobby, you might not be able to make it pro. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not living authentically. It just means that your interests and your authenticity of who you are can be completely different things. And the same goes for your creativity. There's a saying from Fight Club, which is we buy things we don't need to impress people we don't like something along those lines. I may have messed that up, but it's like the same deal with like what we make and put out into the world. We make stuff to please people we don't know because we think that if we hit that target, we'll somehow be happier, we'll somehow have made it. But the reality of making it is not about pleasing the people you aspire to be. It's to inspire the people who inspire you. They're not going to be inspired by you making the same shit they make. They already know what they make and you can't like, that's not going to do anything. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing I would highly recommend trying to veer away from. The secret sauce to authenticity on the internet and just in general is to make stuff not for anybody else but yourself. To try and impress you in the future to be like, yeah, that's like exactly how I felt. It's exactly who I was at that time. I'm... Uh, Quick story, I'm gonna to divert to a quick story, but I went from making movies that were trying to impress filmmaker like Christopher Nolan to then being like, you know what, that's not working. That's not my genuine style. And so what I ended up doing is I started going down the rabbit hole of making like horror films and action movies and just fun sort of films. And then I came across this movie called Bad Mother which is this like music video, first person uh, action scene. And at the time it was like shot on GoPros and stuff. And it really inspired me of how they shot it because it was all first person. And I really loved pushing the boundaries of making movies. So I used that as like a pinch of reference. And then I went out and made a horror film. These horror films spoke to me more. And I brought together my friends and I shot a movie that was in my own style using that as a bit of a pinch of reference from a cinematic standpoint. And I shot a movie that ended up becoming incredible incredibly successful for me at the time, which then led me to making a feature film, which then propelled my career. So rather than trying to make movies like Christopher Nolan, who inspired me, I rather took an influence from someone who just like a short film that really like got me stoked, piece that together with my own flavor, which was making horror films at the time. And that made a movie that was genuine to me that ended up like, like actually doing pretty well. It's good. It's really getting hot. This next section is for all my homies who do intermittent fasting. Intermi intermittent? Those of you who fast, you're probably pretty aware of this, but essentially it's very healthy for your stomach to give it a bit of a break. If it takes in too much food, it ends up just being overwhelmed and it's it's not a good idea. And a lot of health people would highly recommend taking breaks on your stomach so that it can actually have time to reset itself. And I would actually put the same practice in for your mind. When was the last time you just decided to press pause on your brain and stop watching the stuff that you're consistently consuming. Whether it's a vlogger, a series on the internet, a TV show on Netflix, or a podcast that you consistently listen to, when is the last time you're like, I'm not gonna listen to this, I'm not gonna watch anything, I'm not gonna take anything in for like a day. But what ends up happening is when you clean your slate from all inspirations and influences, you start to really look at what are the things that really do intrigue you and inspire you. Maybe it's abstract art, maybe it's a different type of music, maybe it's this analog cassette tape that you listen to when you're in grade 10 and you absolutely love it. 
whatever it is, there's something that's raw to your creativity that can be very like muddled by the influences of the amount of content that you consume daily. So what I recommend is take a mental fast from all of the stuff that you're bringing in. Go out in nature, go for a hike or do whatever, like take just take a break from from the consistent consuming. And what ends up happening is your brain has this like clear canvas to then start putting in stuff that really feels genuine and authentic to itself, which then eradicates problem number one, which is trying to impress people you don't even know. Being inspired and having some sort of influence is relatively helpful when it comes to sort of setting your own personal brand. I consider these called boundaries, where you create sort of your style references. Whenever I work on a movie, I'll send my cinematographer sort of like style references. So for example, my short film Freelancer that I did, we sort of figured out what our, our stylistic boundaries were, which was sort of like the Matrix meets Mr. Robot. And between those, we sort of were able to have a creative language that we could work with. Whenever you work on your own stuff, it's sort of nice to have, okay, like what are my inspirations? What are my stylistic influences? And what I would highly recommend in order to like harness your own authenticity is to do a detox, first of all, but secondly, to go out with your camera and just shoot stuff. Honestly, in nearly every day, I go out and shoot a ton of content that might not make it anywhere, that might not even end up on a video or a hard drive. And there's this consistent pressure for it to be like, well, maybe I need to make a tutorial out this. Maybe I've got to like put this together and piece it together to impress somebody and to do this thing to show off the content that I've created. How many, how many songs have composers written down on a piece of paper, but then never put it into composition? How many songs have made it to GarageBand, but never made it to the radio? There is plenty of art that never sees the light of day, which is somewhat depressing, but it's also relatively fascinating and actually really beautiful. That the fact that there's so, so much art that can be made that doesn't have to see the light of day. It's like journal entries. You don't write journals to be like, well, hopefully one day this gets published into a book. You don't write it with that intention. And so what I would say is like, go out tomorrow or go out today, or go out right now and just shoot something. If you're a photographer, get some photos. If you're a videographer, go film something. If you're a dancer, go dance, graphic designer, go make something. Not for the benefit of making money to please somebody or to get some exposure, only to satisfy the internal craving of creating something. This is my number one tip throughout this whole thing, which is make stuff just for the sake of making it and not doing it for anybody but yourself. Put it on a hard drive, let it sit there. And of course, like my biggest issue is unused great footage. If there's something that like keeps me up at night is like looking at a hard drive of like cool shots and being like, Oh, well, this is going nowhere. So like, am I even a filmmaker? Like I didn't even create a purpose for this. The, the, the honest truth about doing that is like picking up your camera and doing a photo shoot and having fun or having a light room. I want you make a, I want you to draw a parallel to what it's like when you make dinner. If you're gonna make yourself a really good piece of dinner in order just to satisfy you, your heart, your soul, your tummy, all that stuff. It's a really good meal. You slaved over it for about an hour. It turned out incredible. And when you make it, are you going to be like, oh, critics should have been here to review this. Man, I should have taken a photo of it so that people could have seen how great it was. Or can you just eat the meal and enjoy it for yourself and then know that you've learned now how to make a meal that good. And then maybe eventually someone might see an adaptation of that. The true art of doing anything for yourself is to be able to use it as a launch point for you to make future adaptations of it make adaptations of your own art. And therefore, that little side project, little experiment that you did this weekend where you put your camera in slow motion and ran across the woods and filmed in the rain, maybe that's a launch point to give you ideas for future things. And maybe this is just trial and error when it comes to making stuff. So let's say you're sitting at that hard drive and looking at all of this unused great footage, this incredible weekend travel video that you put together that's only maybe getting 10 views on the internet. The reality is exposure isn't everything and experimentation and learning is the, the pinnacle of creativity. So stop pressuring yourself and stop trying to impress people you don't know. It's not worth it. The big thing is there's no such thing as rules when it comes to creativity, only positionable standards. I want you to take a look at vlogs for a quick second. Typically, they're shot on a DSLR with a road video mic on the top, on a gorilla pod, and the person's super close on a wide angle lens. Something sort of like this. Hey, what's up, you guys? 
This is not a rule to vlogging. No one ever said this is how you have to do it. This is sort of what ended up happening. And it was the evolution from filmmaker Casey Neistat, who all of a sudden set a new position in the standard where vlogs were all of a sudden starting to be shot on wide angle lenses. But before that, they were shot on web cameras and crappy camcorders and they, you know, they didn't look the greatest. And then all of a sudden you have someone like Neistat who comes along and moves the standard, changes the bar and puts it into a new position. You can hack this though. And sometimes hacking these positions don't necessarily make anything that's good, but it's fun to experiment. It's fun to try out new things. On my sort of web series, vlog series thing, the Islanders that I've been tinkering with, I'm not making it for anybody but me. And I'm doing it just so I can experiment. And how I shoot those vlogs isn't done on a wide angle lens. It's shot on a 24 millimeter at a 1.8 and it looks a little bit more movie-esque. And then I splice that in with interviews because I like the way interviews are done. And then the interviews are actually also kind of podcast style where it's not necessarily done in interview fashion like a typical TV show. It's done in podcasts because I really like how podcast interviews work in like Joe Rogan or Colin and Samir. And what ends up happening is by me piecing together the things that really get me stoked about creativity, I end up creating stuff that's unique to me and stuff that really fascinates me. I'm referencing and riffing stuff that I get stoked about as opposed to trying to please the shadow of somebody else. So that's it, guys. That's how you can, that's how I've been able to sort of find authenticity and uniqueness in the stuff that I make, in the stuff that I make. And I'd say the number one secret ingredient is just to experiment and have fun with what you're doing. There's no standard set bar and no one's looking at your stuff to be impressed. Um, they're looking at your stuff to be inspired and to be excited for what else is out there, right? And you know, if, if someone were to copy the stuff that I do, I would look at it and be like, that's awesome, but I, I wanna see what you do. I wanna see you, I wanna see your authentic self. And the best way to do that is to clean your slate, not impress anybody but yourself, and to do stuff that gets you genuinely stoked. That's all. <laughs> um, this video is sponsored by Cuts Clothing. Cuts is this incredible clothing company that I've had the honor to join their team and be a part of the stuff that they have. They're the most comfortable clothes I think I've ever worn. I've literally redesigned my entire wardrobe to just have clothes from them, um, removing pretty much every other article that I have available. Um, if you guys are interested in taking a look at you know, wearing literally the softest shirt you might ever wear. I have a link in the description below, which you guys can check out. You can use Zach Ramlin as the promo code and get 15% off your purchase, which actually goes a pretty long way. Um, so give that a gander and that's about it. I absolutely love you guys. Thank you for supporting this channel. And, and that's basically it. Just be you because authentic you is exactly what the world wants and needs. All right, goodbye.